Okay, uh, I've started the recording. So now is the time not to say anything that you don't want others to hear. Uh, anyway, the first thing is this is Hyperledger community. Uh, it's open source and open community. There are no restrictions on who can, uh, who can listen in, who can participate. Obviously, we ask you to be respectful to the uh, presenters. And if anybody, um, uh, you know, so, so we have two principles. One, um, we have to obey the antitrust policy of any jurisdiction that you're participating from. That is the first requirement. The second is a code of conduct that we are respectful and we are not disagreeable even when we disagree. Uh, that is the second. So anybody who does not want to uh, obey these two principles can now log off and disconnect. Otherwise, you can participate. And here uh, is, um, we are glad to have Carlos Pastor, uh, who first reached out to me. And then we also have the illustrious uh, Coti de Monteverde and Paula Pascual. They are all uh, have two, two pillars. One is, their own company, and then Alastria. So uh, Koti is the head of uh, blockchain and uh, crypto in Santander, Banco Santander. Uh, well, I, I am sure that there, there are other appellations for uh, Santander. Uh, the other is Paula Pascual, who is the blockchain uh, lead in um, crypto and blockchain. Uh, she's a project manager, and Carlos is from INITUM, which is a uh, IT services firm, and he's a blockchain strategist. But they are also members of Alestria, and in Cote's case, she's also the sponsor of the Alestria ID. So please welcome these presenters and let us hear from them about practical implementation of SSI and uh, the problems they faced and the challenges they faced and how they overcame them. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bipin. Good afternoon, all. On behalf of Alastria, we appreciate the opportunity that we have today to present its identity model. Uh, practical implementation of, of self-sovereign identity of SSI. So for those that have not heard about Alastria before, let me give you a quick introduction uh, to it. Alastria is the first national nonprofit blockchain association in the world. Uh, it was set up with the aim of promoting the digital economy through the development of decentralized ledger uh, technologies. It is a multi-sector association and has over 500 members from leading corporates and public institutions to, to a small and medium enterprises. And it has built a public permission network that has uh, over 100 nodes. Since its foundation, in order to achieve legally binding transactions in this network, Alastria's priority has been building a digital identity mechanism for individuals and for corporates. And Alastria uh, is seeking, uh, let me move to the next, yeah. Alastria is seeking to democratize access to blockchain by providing the necessary tools to, to promote access, adoption, and use of this technology. Competition is the formula promoted by Alastria. So members collaborate together, building the infrastructure, the ID, and they compete on the applications that they build on top of it. Uh, it is a network agnostic association, um, offers the networks promoted by its members, and we have currently three networks running. Uh, Network T, which is uh, based on quorum technology, and it was released uh, two years ago. Uh, as I said, it has 100 nodes or 
more than 100 right now, and around 40 use cases running on it. We've got a, a network we call Network B. It's hyperlayer based to base, and it was released last year. And also a hyperlayer fabric uh, network. Uh, these networks are being used by by the members to um, to develop their proof of concepts and their pilots, and there are even some use cases in in production. Um, but I mean, this was a brief introduction of Alastria. Uh, Alastria uh, became a member very recently of Hyperlayer, and if you want to learn more, please join the upcoming webinar on the 5th of May that it's going to be uh, organized by Hyperlayer, where Jesus Ruiz, member of the board and CTO of Alastria, is going to explain how Alastria works, so all that they have been doing since 2018, the benefits of using Alastria networks, and, and the use cases that are being uh, built on top of it. And, also how you can get involved into our association. And now getting more into identity, as I mentioned before, since its foundation, in order to achieve legally binding transactions on the, on the networks, Alastria priority was building a digital identity mechanism, a digital identity model, because we are all aware of the problems that we have with our digital identity. So if I ask you the question, how many companies know your email address? Would you be able to answer this question? Uh, I think it's very difficult, right? So we don't have a unique digital identity. Um, we have as much identities as organizations we interact with, and we have a limited control over our personal data. Uh, and that is from the user point of view, but from the organization's company's uh, point of view, they have inconsistent data, inaccurate, they depend on physical proofs and manual processes that are repetitive, expensive, right? So digital identity is currently fragmented and uh, insecure. Uh, and this is uh, something that, <laughs> that the, it's well known in Europe uh, and the European Commission has already announced that they are working to propose a secure European digital uh, identity where citizens, where us, we can control our data, what data we are sharing, uh, how is it going to be used. Uh, and this is, fits very well with the concept of SSI, of uh, self-sovereign identity. So why blockchain for, for SSI? Um, because blockchain is one of the best alternatives to implement it. I mean, you could use another uh, technology, but by using blockchain, you maximize transparency and security. Um, cryptography allows the possibility of signing and verifying the origin of the credentials without needing a third party. And here in our model, we are registering in blockchain the hashes of the credentials as well, the events uh, of their issuance, presentation and revocation. So uh, it's assuring us that they cannot be altered and it's making it GDPR compliant, being totally user centric. Um, obviously, this system does not require any third parties that act as intermediaries uh, who can use and read our personal data. The most obvious benefit here is privacy. So instead of having critical pieces of personal information like license numbers, social security information, et cetera, stored at dozens, if not hundreds of different locations, the information remains with the individual. The individual is, in this, in this case, is the only entity with the authorization to disclose or allow access to sensitive information and also controls the level and duration of external access. And, and now I'm, pleased to hand over to, to Carlos Pastor. He is the leader of the Identity Commission. I'm the sponsor, but he is a leader and he's going to give you um, a deep dive of the identity model. So Carlos, I think you can control now the, the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Toti. I'm very happy to be here to share with you uh, some of our experience in, on uh, implementing this LST ID and uh, the problems that we have faced and the decisions that we have taken during that process. Okay, sorry. It's not there. Well, first of all, I would like to, to, to share with you that uh, this Alastia ID has uh, been, it is the, 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 the result of uh, um, collaborative uh, effort. There are more than 200 members that have been collaborating with that definition. Um, not just uh, technical uh, people, but also functional people, legal people, and people that is related uh, to the, putting that in the market and using 
the, the real use of that elasticity uh, model. Uh, on, on the one hand, uh, we have also been uh, aware of uh, a standardization effort from W3C, that uh, is the, the model that we follow for uh, credential presentation, but also uh, we have been contributing to some other standardization effort. Uh, in particular, we we have been collaborating with uh, uh, INO, that is the, the Spanish standard organization, and we have approved uh, the first, probably the first uh, uh, um, official standard standard from a official standardization body uh, about um, um, identity management based on DLP uh, that has been approved uh, past December. And also, we are collaborating. We have contributed that uh, standard to the Central uh, uh, Standardization uh, European Standardization Body, uh, and we are working with uh, in a GTC uh, nineteen uh, group in order to standardize the uh, the the management of identity at the European board, uh, at the European level. And then also we have been contributed to the European initiative, especially the EBP, the European uh, Blockchain Partnership. Uh, one of the more important efforts of that um, group of uh, that is uh, that this uh, EBP has uh, is um, the members of that EBP are the all the member states plus a couple of uh, non um, European members. And then uh, one of the main efforts is EPSI, that is a European blockchain service infrastructure, that is a real network uh, that is going to provide services, services uh, provide, uh, starting with uh, public administration services, but open in the future to uh, private uh, sector uh, services. And uh, one of the use cases of that uh, European blockchain uh, infrastructure is going to be is is the the SIF, that is European Self Sovereign Identity Framework that uh, has taken as a um, cornerstone as a building uh, found foundation uh, uh, piece uh, Alastair model that has been contributed to the from the beginning. Uh, and there are also other projects that we're going to cover at the end of this, uh, of this um, presentation that are Dalion, the Italians, uh, Cabo Verde, other, other projects that uh, are using that model and are going to uh, align with SIF uh, in the future. Uh, so the, uh, at the end, the, the, the circle is, is, um, is complete. Uh, we can say right now that uh, probably SIF is, uh, is the son of Alastady, but probably the son is uh, becoming uh, bigger than the father. And now we are going to follow the, the son, the SIF, in order to align with, uh, with it. Uh, well, the model is very typical of uh, identity. There are three roles, the issuer of, uh, of credential, the issuer that has to attest something and uh, sign that attestation, that credential, uh, and sharing that credential to the user. And the user then can share the information with our uh, service provider in order to get a service. Uh, first of all, the user asks for some uh, credential. Uh, the, the issuer, after checking that uh, they have the credential and can, can sign and attest the credential, send them uh, the information to the user through a private uh, channel that is not at all uh, at this point related to blockchain. It can be HTTPS or any other uh, secure uh, channel. Uh, we are talking to, to be more, uh, to, to use an example, for example, the uh, driving license, a credit card, or the fact that I'm over 28, uh, 25 or I'm over 18 or whatever. Uh, this information is stored under the uh, control of the user in the user wallet. That can be a mobile application, a cloud wallet, whatever that is under the, the control of the user. Then, uh, when the user wants to receive a service, a service, the service provider uh, that is calling other models, um, relying party or verifier, is exactly the same, the same role. But uh, in Alastria, we call it from the beginning service provider, uh, and then ask for some information through a presentation request. Uh, um, a structure very similar to a presentation, but is uh, used to, is an extension of the W3C, and is used to request some information and including the level of assurance of that information. Then the user, uh, with the help of the, of the wallet, selects the appropriate information and uh, presents, uh, sign up that information to the service provider. Uh, in that uh, presentation, uh, 
in addition to the uh, credentials that has, have been selected by the, by the user, uh, is also the purpose, for example, renting a car in that case, um, that, uh, for which uh, that presentation is related. So, and, and also a, a very, a very um, role in this, in this schema uh, has a distributed identifier, a DID, uh, the issuer, the user, the service provider to use, uh, to control the credential, the presentation, and everything. Of course, every one of uh, those role players, the issuer, the user, the service provider, can have one, at least one or more uh, DIDs. Everything is controlled by the user as a, with a mobile application as a first implementation can be also be a cloud wallet that uh, is uh, able to provide that uh, functions to the user. Uh, management of uh, the generation of the DAB, the credentials, the, the presentation, and also be, can be used for authentication. Uh, what is a, a credential? A credential is uh, based on the, on the model of the WCC and has all this information. Uh, the network where this information is going to be anchored is going to be registered, not the store, but register the action that I, I'm going to do. Uh, every, everyone is going to do about the credential. The subject, uh, uh, the ID, uh, so is the information, uh, the DID to which that uh, credential is uh, linked and related. The level of assurance, so the degree of um, trustworthiness that uh, you can, uh, that uh, the process of uh, issuing that credential ensures is not the same for example if a bank issues a, um, a credential about uh, the credit card can have almost a complete uh, a, a trust uh, over that information if uh, is issuing a credential a bank the same bank is uh, issuing a credential about the each age all the transportiness is not the same probably if that information about the age is uh, provided by your um, by the police or the uh, official public administration can, can uh, reach uh, level three. And also initial date, uh, uh, initial validity date and validity date, the issuer uh, of the of that financial and of course the signature. Uh, for, uh, for a presentation is uh, the aggregation of a, a certain, certain number, number of, uh, of credential plus some other information, uh, the initial validity date, optionally the, the end validity date. So if you include that, the um, service provider, the writing party is obliged to, to erase that information uh, at, at, at a given date. Then the, server, uh, the service provider DID. So this presentation is only addressed to that uh, service provider. So only that service provider can use uh, legally uh, that uh, information. Also, the, a description, a, a link to the business process that is related in the example is the renting a car. So this information can also can only be used for renting a car, not for any other thing. And all of course the subject signal. So the, the up to that uh, we are not, uh, having used the, the blockchain. Now the blockchain appears uh, first of all to uh, be able to publicly. Uh, uh, validate the signatures of all the credentials and presentation. So the public key or a hash of the public key is uh, is uh, stored in the in the blockchain. And for third parties to be able to check the signatures that are included in uh, included in uh, credentials and presentations. Then another layer, uh, another information is uh, also in the, in the blockchain that is related to the status to the actions that are performed over those. Uh, those credentials and presentation. First of all, when the when the issuer issues the credential, uh, records a hash not uh, containing any information about uh, about the, the credential, but a reference that uh, the hash is used as a reference and uh, the status of that credential that is in that uh, at that time uh, sent. When the user receives uh, that credential, also uh, writes on the can write on the on the on the ledger that it, uh, the user has received that uh, credential. Uh, those hashes are different. We are going to explain in details how they are calculated in order to avoid any correlation of that information that is in the, in the, in the ledger. Only uh, the, um, the, the people, the, the actors in, uh, involved in that uh, sharing of information can uh, understand that information is stored in the ledger. 
and the same for uh, the presentation when the user sent the presentation can record in the ledger that uh, the user has sent that uh, presentation and also the um, service provider can receive uh, can record the blockchain that uh, it has received that uh, presentation all this recording is optional and it will depend uh, mainly on the on the use case and uh, so not for every use case all this recording is uh, useful but for example if i present something some information in front of a public administration i want to have a digital evidence evidence that i i've done that and the confirmation from the public administration that i uh, that they have received that information okay Right. Okay, and then as an, as, as an additional function, when uh, the service provider receives a, present, a, present, a credential that is inside the presentation, one of those that is inside the, the envelope representing the, the presentation, uh, receives a given credential and can check the status, uh, the status of that credential on the uh, on the blockchain. So, for example, can ensure the, the time where that information has been issued by the credential beside the information that is inside the, the credential. Uh, because this uh, information cannot be uh, forget, uh, but information that is inside the credential, even if it is signed, uh, can be more or less uh, trustful. Then, uh, to stress that no person, no direct personal information is stored in the, in the blockchain, but on only digital evidence, evidences about actions. And these uh, references that the evidences uh, are done in a way that are not correlated. How do those, those uh, hashes that uh, are mentioned in the, the previous slide are calculated? We use different, uh, two different uh, hashes for the issuer of the, of the credential and for the user, the receiver of the, of the credential. If the first one, the, the hash that is going to be used by that case Santander about the, the about the passport or about the, the, credit, the credit card or about any other thing, uh, is uh, first of all signed. This signature is uh, included in the uh, verified then verified credential, and we also concatenate the DID of the uh, of the issue, the DID of Santander in that case, in order to calculate the hash. So. We calculate a hash that is related to the uh, credential, but is also related to the DID of the issuer of that credential. In the same way, the sec a second hash is calculated for the user, for the subject, the user, to use that to refer to the very same credential. So the credential in both hashes is exactly the, the same, include the signature to ensure enough entropy, but uh, they are calculated two different hashes about the same uh, credential, one to be used by the uh, issuer, by Santander, another to be used by the, by the uh, site. In the same way, uh, two other different uh, hashes uh, are calculated for the presentation. One concatenated to the, to the presentation, the DID of the, of the subject, the, the, the user that uh, is going to send the presentation to the service provider, and another different hash uh, related to the same to the very same uh, uh, presentation, concatenating the, the, the DID of the, uh, in that case, the service provider, the rent a car uh, company. So calculating a different a fourth, uh, a fourth uh, hash. Uh, in some, sometimes uh, this uh, model of calculating four different hashes about the credential and, uh, and the presentation that include that uh, credential is called uh, four-way hashes. So, uh, those uh, hashes are useful to store the evidence of uh, the issuance uh, of a credential and the presentation of a presentation in front of a service provider. But uh, this is not the whole um, uh, life cycle of a, of a creden uh, credential or presentation. What happens, for example, if I, um, I my credit card is uh, lost or uh, or um, or uh, yes, uh, I close my my contract with the uh, with the bank. So if I keep the, the credit card, if I keep any certification about, for example, the the ownership of a bank account, any other type of financial, if I keep the digital, 
uh, evidence the credential about that, I can still uh, be using. So the issuer really needs a way to revoke that credential in case that credential becomes invalid. And the way to do that in, in that model that avoids the direct relationship between the service provider and the issuers um, is cannot be to, to say to the user, please stop using that because the user can keep uh, using that. The issuer cannot uh, say to the service provider, uh, please stop using that, not directly because they, uh, the issuer, really don't know uh, to, to whom the user has shared that uh, type of credentials. So the issuer cannot address to the service provider saying, please stop uh, using that because it's not uh, any longer true. And cannot do that, uh, not using a uh, intermediate uh, that is going to be the, the blockchain. And the same for the user. When the user wants to suppress uh, the information that has shared, for example, for renting a car, um, uh, can address to the service provider. But what really happens in the real life is that uh, 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 for that, uh, the user needs the collaboration of the service provider. If the collaboration wants to just ignore that communication, uh, just uh, avoiding uh, recognizing that knowledge, that, uh, knowledge, that, uh, that communication, uh, it's very difficult for the user to be sure that uh, the, user, the service provider has um, got the communication about the suppression of the, of the presentation of the credential. So here the, the blockchain uh, goes to the, to the rescue. How the, the issuer can uh, uh, revoke a credential that has been issued? And um, once to the credential revocation, start writing something in the blockchain. So updating the status of that uh, credential from sent to vote in a way that the service provider, any service provider, receives an event and can check at any time the credential status. So they know that that credential is no longer valid and can ask another new credential to the user uh, for the uh, then uh, current information. The same happened when the user wants, uh, first of all, to revoke a presentation, to suppress the information that has been shared with, uh, with a service provider. Uh, the only thing that uh, he, he needs to do, she needs to do, is uh, change the status of that uh, presentation from send to suppress, uh, asking the suppression of that uh, presentation. Then uh, the service provider is going to receive um, uh, 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 an update of the status of that uh, presentation. So he, complete, uh, he knows that uh, this presentation uh, is already uh, suppressed and can no, long, no longer use. And under the terms and conditions of the uh, usage of presentation, uh, the service provider is obliged to uh, stop using that unless the uh, law uh, allows uh, the service provider that information for legal purposes uh, or in front of courts or something like, uh, like that, but cannot uh, continue use in an operational way that information. And this information, this uh, update of the, of the information on the blockchain is done by the user without any help from the user, any collaboration from the service provider. So it can be done uh, in a way completely, uh, in a completely autonomous way with the help of any other uh, of the service provider nor the instrument. So can be done in completely in, in his own. So uh, the, the action for the service provider is going to update uh, also the, the status related to the, to, uh, to the service provider has about that is a very simple presentation to uh, suppress. And that completes the, the circle. What, uh, what is um, uh, already implementing of the, all those uh, uh, of all those uh, pieces? All the things that are related to the uh, smart contracts, uh, the, the things that are inside the blockchain are completely implemented by Alastria. A library to, to make easier to use those smart contracts is also uh, implemented by Alastria. And a service API is also implemented by Alastria. So anyone, anyone can use this model. What is not implemented by Alastria, but is going to be implemented in a co competitive way by, by the members of Alastria, but the, the, not by Alastria in a collaborative way, but uh, by competing a consortium, is the, um, the part that is uh, related to the service provider and the issuer and also the wallet. Uh, there is a reference implementation implemented by Alastria, but it's just a very 
demo uh, reference implementation just to show that everything works, but it's not uh, meant to be used for commercial purposes. So uh, members of Alastia or any other way, any other um, entity, any other company or public administration that is willing to use that model needs to implement the software that is um, related, uh, is required to uh, the issuance well of credential or the reception of credentials. Um, this is the, the because Alastair is an association and cannot compete with members that in some cases are uh, IT companies that want to provide that, that as a service. Uh, all the documentation is uh, available, any, all the information is open source and can be used by anybody, and uh, uh, is available, these are the references, we are going to share the, the presentation that is also, also available to uh, anybody, and uh, you can check all the information there. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, give the floor to Paula that is going to cover the practical implementation. Perfect. Thank you so much, Carlos. So we are going to see the practical implementation through different examples of projects that are currently using the Alastria Identity model. But before, uh, we want to highlight the different benefits that these decentralized digital identity models uh, have uh, for the user and also for the different companies. As Coty was mentioning, um, we are providing the users to access to services immediately. In fact, for example, one demo that we prepared using the Alastria Identity Wallet was one user requesting a loan that could be approved on the, on the spot because the user was providing, uh, in this case, Banco Santander, with a information that has been already verified by other entities. Also, uh, as we were saying, there is a greater control of the data usage of the user because thanks to blockchain and the traceability, the user can know exactly who is uh, sharing his information with, uh, for how long and for what purpose. Also, we are also facilitating the different uh, exercises of the rights provided by the GDPR um, because we are providing the users with a one-click revocation process that is unique for all the service providers. So we are allowing the users saying in the blockchain, hey, I want you to delete my data and this is publicly registered. Also, uh, thanks to the double hash mechanism that Carlos has explained, we are assuring completely the privacy of the user because no third party can really know uh, the user's activity in the blockchain thanks to that double hash mechanism because all the hashes are different one to another. Also, this is very important that we highlighted. Uh, there is no data trading because the issuer can know uh, where the user is using uh, their data with. And also, um, and this is a, a, a very good business advantages, uh, as we are having more information about the user and this is more accurate, we can offer discounts and bonuses uh, to the different users. Because for example, in the example that I was saying that uh, a user was requesting a loan to a bank using uh, verifiable credentials, if we can know that, for example, that user has an X uh, credit scoring with another bank or he is a good payer because he has uh, already requested uh, other loans to other banks and he has already paid them, uh, we can offer them a lower uh, interest rate. This happens also, for example, if we are talking about driving um, the insurances companies that, for example, can offer a discount or better conditions uh, in the insurance uh, policy if they know that that user is a good driver, for example. Of course, there are also benefits for the companies. We are improving our customer satisfaction level because we are eliminating all those uh, forms and documentation that the user needs to provide us with. We are also improving the data quality uh, above all thanks to the level of assurance that it's already embedded into the different credentials according to the EIDAS uh, regulation here in, in the European Union. And also uh, we are facilitating in the regulatory compliance of the different companies. Uh, on the other hand, we are reducing the churn rates because of uh, that fact that we are uh, eliminating those forms or documentation that the user needs to give us. Also, we are reducing a lot all the 
information verification cost, the cost that we are having in our pack offices um, because of reviewing all the information that the user is providing to us. And also we are reducing the problems of privacy and security because this is a decentralized model and this there is no a central repository of data. Also, I would like to, um, to show to you that this um, decentralized digital identity system responds to a, to a real need. And why am I uh, saying that? Because we, are, uh, we have carried out different user investigations. We carried, out, uh, we carried out those investigations before and after the COVID-19 pandemic, because of course the perceptions of the users were different. You all know the, the different, for example, COVID tracking apps that uh, they were releasing to the market. Uh, so we were uh, analyzing the perception of the users regarding the privacy of their data. Some of the examples of this user investigation that we have carried out, they are um, desk research, different interviews, and also an online survey with more than 1,400 um, users. The main insights, of course, apart from the accelerate, acceleration of digitalization as a means of personal and work relationships, we discovered that there is a, re, a generalized perception of obligation in the transfer of data. And this was reinforced after the COVID-19 pandemic. And also a very good insight is that there is a fear of the use of personal data without their own knowledge, and they are demand, demanding for greater control over uh, this data. Also, the public administration and, and the banking uh, companies, they were perceived as, as safer organizations in the protection of the data. Um, once that we uh, know this, we are going to show you some examples of different projects that they are. They have different goals, and they are based on on the Alastria identity model. Um, first of all, uh, we have Dalian. As you can see, there are different companies. They are very big companies here in Spain, and this is a multi-sectorial consortium. We have different banks, utilities, we have insurances companies, and also the public uh, administration as an observer. And why we are building an ecosystem like this? Because if we are talking about building a unique digital identity, we already have that digital identity fragmented in different silos. So it is needed that all the companies we join together and we can provide as much information about the user as we can. So the user can really have one unique identity with all the uh, enough attributes to be able to access to any type of services. Also, um, one of the biggest challenges that we are facing when we are building a decentralized digital identity is to build that ecosystem and that digital identity of the user from scratch. Uh, as we are a company that we already have data about the user, we are solving this challenge um, from the very beginning because uh, the only thing we need to do is to transform that data that we already have about those users in a centralized way into a decentralized model in a self-sovereign identity model uh, through different verifiable credentials. So this data that we are already having to the user, we can say, hey, uh, I can issue to you different verifiable credentials signed by me about this data. So you will be able to use it in um, to access any service that you want. And also, of course, these companies uh, here in Spain, we have a potential to reach 30 million users uh, in Spain. Of course, we are counting on this uh, public administration of service because of, of the same fact, we are talking about one unique digital identity. So it doesn't make sense to have one digital identity for the private sector and another for the public sector. So we are trying to go together into this mission of building the self-sovereign identity uh, concept in Spain. So um, here in Dalian, we are uh, launching our MVP in the quarter two of this year. And also it's important to mention that we are uh, presenting this model, uh, this project to the regulatory sandbox that has been approved uh, here in Spain. And probably the next week, uh, we will know if we finally uh, got approved and we can pilot this project with the public administration. Another project that we are having is Digitalis. Um, the difference between Digitalis and Dalian is that Dalian is focused on the on the digital identity of the final user, and in Digitalis, 
uh, they have a focus on the supplier management. So we are talking about uh, the identity of non-physical person. Uh, it's uh, about companies. They are, of course, using the Alastair identity model and um, they are trying to build a unique identity for companies that they are acting as a supplier or as a, or as a buyer. And the suppliers can manage their own identity, facilitating the sharing of certifications, reducing cost and increasing security. Uh, in Dalian, we were talking that we are building a model for final users, so the wallet will be um, a mobile uh, application. In this case, as we are talking about companies, the wallet is therefore on a server. As you can see, also Digitalis is following a multi-sectorial approach because we can find also insurances companies, banking, uh, utilities, etc. Another uh, other related projects uh, with Alastria ID, we have Uport that they have shown a lot of interest uh, on an Alastria identity compatible wallet. Also, we have KTrust by Everis uh, that it's a, a consultant here in, in Spain. So uh, they have a complete suite for identity uh, ecosystem. Uh, they have a compatible uh, wallet with our uh, model and they have several projects that they are uh, carrying out uh, with different actors. Also, we have the project of, of BitChain that uh, has been developed by Validated ID. So they are focusing on onboarding Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering processes, and they are collaborating with Alastria, Sovereign, and uh, Div. And uh, last but not least, we have Botun. Um, they are uh, developing voting solutions. They are focusing on industry-specific credentials and they are blockchain agnostic. So they are not just working with one blockchain network, but uh, with many of them. Taking advantage that we have Carlos Pastor in this meeting, that he is the convener of the European Self-Sovereign Identity Framework. I think that, uh, Carlos, you can present better uh, this slide. I'm going to give you back the the control of the of the screen. Okay, thank you very much. Well, as I said, uh, the SIF project is uh, inside the uh, FC, that is an initiative of uh, uh, all the member states of the European Union. And uh, well, its uh, version two is going to be released by May. Probably uh, there is going to be some delay, but could be uh, May June of uh, of this year. So there is going to be a um, uh, v2 version that uh, where uh, some uh, countries that have a uh, uh, step uh, as uh, early adopter are going to deploy some real uh, real but uh, limited in the sense of the people that is going to use that uh, uh, pilots uh, and uh, those are the, the the use case that are in the first wave in yellow the ESIF, the diploma that is related is, is really a, a special use uh, uh, application of the SIF model to diploma, uh, starting with university diplomas and then extending to any type of uh, certification. The notarization that is really uh, meant to uh, notarize things on the, on the blockchain, documents, mainly documents on the blockchain, and trusted data sharing that is, uh, really, is a special case for uh, cross-border uh, taxes payment. Uh, and then new use cases are uh, just starting to, to, to work about a unique social security number, a coordination for refugees, and uh, debt and equity finances for SMEs, for small and medium enterprises. Uh, just to, to show that this is uh, something very uh, related and very similar to what we have presented, this is an official um, uh, slide from the, from the project where you can see that everything is more or less in the same line that uh, Alastair, as I mentioned before, uh, using a specific blockchain that is the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure and, and, going and making ac also action over the blockchain as a uh, revoking and so, and that these are not going to be implemented in this version two, the revoking, but is in the, in the roadmap for future versions. Uh, and then uh, I, I, we propose some, uh, Yes, the next step. Uh, I invite, we invite you to to um, to see the the open source that is uh, in the information that I gave uh, to you before, and uh, to say that we are open to collaboration. Any collaboration in the model uh, is has been open for the begin from the beginning to uh, any anybody. There are uh, at least uh, eleven uh, Alaska members that are. Uh, not the Spanish uh, companies or Spanish uh, institutions that are uh, foreign institutions. 
So everybody is, is welcome. And uh, say that we are working in interoperability, in interoperability with ESIF, and we are very happy to start working in interoperability with uh, your community. And the last step that they propose is the, an invitation for the Hyperledger Identity Working Group to speak uh, to the um, to the Alaska Identity uh, Community uh, in a webinar that uh, can be set up uh, at your uh, earliest convenience. And then uh, we are, of course, open to uh, your questions or to any other thing that you want. Thank you so much for all the great for the great presentation. Um, and uh, two things. One is uh, there's Luca who has asked a question here, uh, which is a very uh, you know technical question. Okay. Is the API swagger offered on some central Elastria node, or is it exposed by each single network node? Thanks. Luca is. Can, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't get to the beginning. Is, is the API, Swagger API, offered yeah. on some central Alastria node, or is it exposed by each single network node? Yeah, it's exposed by every single uh, network node, or even any other institution that can provide that service and use. Uh, um, another uh, a node that is uh, provided by any other company. So uh, two pieces that can be uh, deployed everywhere. I have a couple of questions. Uh, hopefully um, I won't just dominate the questions. <laughs> uh, the first, first is, um, you know that uh, there has been a lot of work in um, the canonicalization of uh, verifiable credentials. Uh, so are you aware of that work and are you um, following that? And uh, how do you propose to do the canonicalization? That's the first question. Okay. Um, shall I get it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay yeah. Uh... We are aware there are many standardization and canonical, can, can, sorry, that canonicalization, uh, canonical, canonicalization <laughs> of, uh, of credentials. Uh, we are aware of some, uh, uh, for example, in the diplomas use case uh, on ESIF, uh, they are using the, the um, uh, Europass uh, for to standardize the uh, diploma, uh, the diploma related uh, credentials. So we are getting uh, that. Uh, a semantic model and trans well, this semantic uh, model is translated in, into XML in that case for a uh, Europass. And we are using the same semantic model, but translating in, uh, it to JVT in order to GWT uh, format in order to be used inside that, uh, inside ESIF. And of course, in Alaska, we can use the same model. And we are not leading, we are not working uh, in that. We are uh, focusing on the transportation layer you want in the sharing layer, not in the semantic uh, that is on top of that. Uh, for them, though, some use cases inside the Italian, uh, Italian project, we are going to standardize some, uh, also some uh, credentials, and we are happy to align with any uh, uh, wider thought on that uh, sense. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is a very um, interesting topic because, uh, as soon as you start hash using hashes, you got to uh, basically have the same um, same credential. However, it is presented hash to the same value. I mean, the equivalent equivalence of two uh, two credentials. Uh, if we can explain the canonicalization, it is uh, basically order is important. Empty. Okay. Empty things are important uh, that we either strip out the empties or uh, we impose a semantic uh, ordering on the elements or even though they conform to the same XML schema. Anyway, yeah. uh, let's not dive deep into uh, the Okay, weeds. okay, yes. <laughs> yes, the, this, yeah. Um, I, I, I 
go more to the to the standardization than mechanical linkages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that case, yeah, this effort is, is very interesting, but I, I'm we are not completely aware of that effort. Uh, I think that is a great uh, it's a great idea, but I think that is uh, as far as I know, I, I don't know very much. Uh, we are still. Uh, 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 we can interact uh, later. Either. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, because you uh, place hashing at the center of your model, that's why I asked the question, not because of uh, I want to dive deep into the. Uh, so one more question before I give uh, Jim the uh, floor. The other question is about the digitalis, because you said that you are going to have. Um, central wall, I mean, you know, server side wallet. So there are two aspects to this, right? One is, uh, do you interact with uh, GLIFE, which is the Global Le Legal Entity Identity Foundation? Two is uh, uh, GLIFE has started laying out some uh, path because even though enterprises have the wallet, it is actually roles in the enterprises. Like for example, Cody probably can sign certain documents that you cannot sign because she is on a, on a different level. So uh, even though the enterprise wallet is for enterprises, it is actually the roles in the enterprises that interact with the, with the wallet. So uh, will, will you make that available also on the roles, you know, on wallets that are held by people, not just held in a central server. Paula, probably you can. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, I'm not part of the consortium, so this should be answered by um, Digitalis. Uh, as far as I know, um, they are not um, having conversations um, with that uh, organization, but yes, of course, they are. Uh, at, at the end, they are final users who uh, they are uh, signing, for example, different documents on behalf of uh, their company. So they are solving uh, that part. Of course, in Dalian, um, that we are focusing on the on the final user digital identity, we also uh, need to solve this issue because, for example, uh, if I want to sign something on behalf of my company, I would like to have two different verifiable credentials through my uh, mobile uh, application. Once it's that I am Paula Pascual, so this is an identification verifiable credential, and another that I am capable of signing uh, documents on behalf of my company. So um, I think uh, this is a very interesting point uh, and maybe we can interact later and we can start studying uh, that that part because as I'm saying, we are focusing on the final user, but of course we will need to go into the company's uh, identity. And I think uh, we should analyze that uh, very, I think it's very important to do that. Sure, uh, there are a lot of questions on the chat, but I don't think we can answer all of them. But I think uh, since Jim has his hand, hand raised, I'm sure he's, a, he's, a, he's always a questioner. So let's uh, hear Jim. Thanks, Vipin. Um, and I thank you very much for this awesome presentation. The technology you're driving toward is really critical. And I had the opportunity last year to work on an SSI implementation for an MVP solution for a US state. And we, in a sense, followed the same process, the same design you did. Um, so we were doing, we had the issuer in this case was the state and they were issuing licenses, if you will. I, we had identities issued on individuals. We had identities issued on firms. Everybody had either enterprise wallets or personal wallets. And then we issued credentials back and forth for different kinds of things, including hiring. So for instance, I could hire Paula as an accountant in my firm and we issued you an employment credential, that kind of thing. And when I did the hiring, we did use role-based access control. So I was doing that as an HR manager that had the authority, if you will, to issue that credential. Um, all of that said, uh, I think we cheated. <laughs> we, uh, being lazy and not wanting to spend a lot of time, we actually started with that pan-Canadian trust framework built on Indy Aries, right? And we took the Vaughn um, solution and all we did really is literally extend that, which worked out really well. So 
literally the entire project was done in like four months. Um, so we have an MVP. It absolutely is not a production implementation because there's a whole lot of things on scale. But the good news, at least as we know, the wallet scales large and more than large enough for what the state is going to need to do with identities and credentials because it's a small state. It's not a big state, which is a good thing. But that said, I'm trying to figure out, um, are you, I, I missed part of the questioning piece, but I know you're using some stuff from Hyperledger. I'm not sure if you're using all the things that are out there in the identity space, or you, did you build your own stack for that? Yes, we, we, we did. Uh, we started uh, more or less at the same time. And we are, uh, of course, uh, looking over the faults, but uh, really we are concentrating in, in building something simple, but, but effective. Uh, there are some other uh, implementation possible. There are many ways of implementing uh, this uh, paradigm of uh, SSI. And that's why we are very interested in knowing more about uh, what Hyperlogic community is, is doing. We tried some from in the past to, to reach uh, Hyperlogic, but uh, due to some uh, internal problems, probably we didn't get uh, a, good connect, a good connection with Hyperlogic. And now we are happy to, to learn and to apply uh, things that have been done uh, uh, in that community and to apply to our, our model or to adapt our model to be uh, interpreted with uh, with other folks, uh, so we are open. We probably have not uh, paid enough attention to to other folks, but uh, sometimes if you are uh, paying attention to everything that is moving around, you don't advance. And our uh, resources and as an Spanish association are quite limited, and we decide to advance and to learn and to pro propose some things. For example, right now, we are absolutely convinced that we have to follow a, a SIF project because it's a bigger project that is based in the same concepts, but have more, more resources than uh, that Alastria. And uh, even uh, some Alastria projects are going to adapt to that. Uh, we are happy to, to, to adapt also or to, to use uh, things that have been uh, developed in other projects like uh, hyperledger areas or something like that. But, uh, we have not uh, a, enough information right now that we can, and we are starting to work on that. Yeah, thanks. And th that's exactly why we, in a sense, said the first thing we want to do, this is really using bad words, but I'll say our first goal was to figure out what do we have to do? Our second goal is say, where can I steal all the parts that I need to meet the first goal? And so in that, we went shopping, so to speak, and found that Pan-Canadian Trust Framework had a sort of a pre-built version of what we needed. So that's why we stole it. What's kind of important, as you know, and you've said, is the evolving standards. So one of the things is the wallet standards. We don't have a universal wallet yet, but at least we use like an ERC-1155, which is close enough. It's not done, but there's more work there. There's also the verifiable credential standard that W3C put out now, um, which is the JSON LD format and so on that gives us something. And I know Aries is in the middle of actually rolling that out. So when we get to restart and say, move off of MVP and start moving to production, in a sense, I wanna go back shopping and steal some more, if that makes sense uh, from what's out there. But uh, we had, it, let's put it this way, I'll say, with Aries, we had a great shopping experience. So it was easy, it wasn't hard, and it saved a ridiculous amount of time. So we had a very limited budget time and, and only a couple of developers on it. And we got to the end state that we needed to, at least for the MVP, you know, going that route. So well, thank you. Seeing your uh, stuff. And I'll say we, there's a ton of applications that we, you guys want to address too. Thanks. We, we are coming to the end of the hour. I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, to uh, have to stop you, but now you can start stealing from Alastria because they are open source too. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, we can interact. I have a bunch of questions on the chat. I can send it to you if you guys feel like answering them. Beautiful, go ahead, answer them. And the other thing is uh, to get the presentation in a, uh, in a way that can be shared with other people if it is open. That is a uh, wonderful thing. And a lot of people are uh, on chat saying it is a great presentation that we are very grateful to you for taking the time in your evening when you should be relaxing, uh, having this, uh, doing this presentation. So thank you all and uh, hope to interact more. And I also run the Capital Markets uh, Special Interest Group 
which is where uh -huh. half of my uh, stuff is. So maybe we can talk about uh, the identity in the larger context of capital markets. What does mm -hmm. it allow us to do in a uh, to reboot capital markets? And Jim uh, runs the public sector working group, and we are going to have uh, also joint presentations for other things. So. We are all in this together and hope to learn from the best in the field, yeah. you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Thank you. And happy to share and happy to, to host you in a webinar about uh, what has been done in, in this group, awesome uh, group uh, in, in our periodic uh, webinars. And Koti, you want to say something else? Uh, thanks a lot for, for inviting us today and having the opportunity to show you the work that we've done in the last two years. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to collaborate, yes. to collaborating more. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And I have to close the uh, uh, Zoom right now. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>